In this video, we're going to talk about varactor diodes, also known as varicap or a variable capacitance diode. So let's start with the electrical symbol for this diode. So a regular diode has a symbol that looks like this. That's a regular diode. And on the left, we have the electrical symbol of a varactor diode. It looks like the combination of a diode and a capacitor. That is a parallel plate capacitor. And like a regular diode, this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. This is the p-type material and this is the n-type material. So we have the anode and the cathode. When current flows from the p-type material towards the n-type material, this is conventional current, which is in the opposite direction of electron flow. When it flows in this direction, it's said to be forward bias. Now, if we apply the voltage in the other direction, that is, if we apply a positive voltage at the n-type material and the negative voltage at the p-type material, then it's in reverse bias mode. Now, the reactor diode is a special type of diode. All diodes have some sort of junction capacitance when reverse bias, but the varactor diode has a very high junction capacitance. And so it makes it useful as a voltage controlled capacitor. The capacitance is controlled by the amount of reverse voltage applied at the device. So this particular varicap diode when you apply the positive term of a battery to the cathode and the negative term of the battery to the anode, it will have a measurable amount of junction capacitance represented by C sub T. Now let's talk about why diodes act as capacitors when reverse biased. So what we have here is the n-type material on the left and the p-type material on the right. We're going to connect a battery to it. So we have the positive term of the battery connected to the n-type material, the negative term of the battery connected to the p-type material. So this is in reverse bias mode. Now, when this happens, a depletion layer forms when the capacitor is in reverse bias mode. I'll write DL for depletion layer. And the depletion layer acts as an insulator. And this basically forms a capacitor. A capacitor is basically two metal plates separated by some sort of insulated material. It could be air, it could be a dielectric such as paper, mica, but that's a capacitor. Two metal plates separated by an insulator. Here, we have, you can think of the N and the P type semiconductor material as the two metal plates. And the depletion layer is the insulator. So in this case, it acts as a capacitor. Now, what happens if you increase the reverse voltage that's applied to the diode in reverse bias mode? Will the depletion layer increase or decrease? What would you say? Let's say we increase the voltage to 20 volts. As you increase the reverse voltage, the depletion layer increase. It gets wider. And as a result, the capacitance decreases. The junction capacitance can be described by this equation. It's equal to the permittivity of the semiconductor material times the area, that is the cross-sectional area of the junction, divided by the width of the depletion layer. So this is W sub D. So as the reverse voltage increases, the width of the depletion layer increases. And because that's on the bottom of the fraction, that's inversely related to the junction capacitance. And so the junction capacitance decreases. So here's what you need to understand. As the reverse voltage goes up, 
the junction capacitance goes down. These two are inversely related. Now let's consider the junction capacitance values for a regular diode and let's compare it with that of a varactor diode. So I went online and looked up the specs for the 1N4001 conventional diode. And this is what I found for the junction capacitance. So given a reverse voltage of 0.1 volts, the junction capacitance is 30 picofarads. Now given a reverse voltage of 1 volt, so you could write C sub 1, the junction capacitance is 20 picofarads. And given a reverse voltage of 4 volts, it decreases to 15 picofarads. And for a reverse voltage of 10 volts, it's 11 picofarads. And for a reverse voltage of 100, it's 4 picofarads. So if we were to graph this uh, data, let's say we put the junction capacitance on the y-axis, the reverse voltage on the x-axis, you could see that as the reverse voltage increases, the capacitance decreases. As it increased from 0.1 to 30, I mean 0.1 to 100 volts, the capacitance decreased from 30 to 4. So for this particular data, we would get something that looks like this. So the reverse voltage varied from 0.1 to 100. That's a huge range. But the capacitance, it only went down from basically 30 to 4. Now this leads to another important term, something called the capacitance ratio. The capacitance ratio tells you how the capacitance changes with respect to reverse voltage changes. So notice that for this example, well, before I explain it, would you say that the 1N4001 diode has a high capacitance ratio or a low capacitance ratio? What would you say? This particular diode has a low capacitance ratio because the capacitance doesn't change much given a large change in reverse voltage. As the reverse voltage changes from 0.1 to 100, the junction capacitance decreases only from 30 to 4. So those are relatively small changes. Now let's compare that with the Varactor diode. So this is going to be the NTE618 Varactor diode. Now most diodes look like this. This is how the the 1N4001 diode looks like, but the NTE618 diode, it looks like this. It looks like a transistor, but with two terminals instead of three. Now at a capacitance, I mean at a reverse voltage of 1.2, the junction capacitance, it ranges from 420 picofarads to 459 picofarads. Now at a junction, I mean at a reverse voltage of 3.5, the junction capacitance varies from 144 to 192 picofarads, according to the data sheet that I found online. And at a reverse voltage of 6 volts, it varies from 46 to 61 picofarads. By the way, I'm rounding these numbers to the nearest whole number. And at a reverse voltage of 8 volts, it varies between 20 to 24 picofarads. So if we were to plot the junction capacitance with the reverse voltage, we would get a curve that is far more steep than the other one. Let me uh, draw a decent looking curve. It's not exactly like that, but the important point that you want to take from it is that this, the slope, is more steep compared to the slope here. And so this particular 
diode has a high capacitance ratio. The reason why it has a high capacitance ratio is because the junction capacitance changes greatly with respect to the changes in the reverse voltage. So going from a reverse voltage of 1.2 to 8.0, the capacitance changed from a maximum of 460 to a minimum of 20. So those are huge capacitance changes given a small change in reverse voltage. So the very cap diode has a high capacitance ratio with respect to a regular conventional diode. Now let's talk about some of the applications of a varactor diode. You could use them in tuned circuits or even as voltage controlled oscillators. So here's one such circuit. Here we have an inductor in series with a resistor and these two components will be parallel to a varactor diode. Now the arrow has to point towards the positive voltage source so that it's in reverse bias mode. And then we're going to have another resistor and then this is going to be the ground. So we're going to call this R1 and R2. Now R2 will be a potential meter, a variable resistor, because R1 and R2, they form a voltage divider network. And so by adjusting R2, we can adjust the voltage, the reverse voltage across the junction, I mean, across the very cap diode. So thus R2 will control VR. If we increase the value of R2, then the reverse voltage across the diode, which we'll call D1, that's going to decrease. And so by adjusting R2, we can affect the junction capacitance. As we decrease the reverse voltage, the junction capacitance increases. So the potential meter R2 controls the junction capacitance of D1. And so that can control the resonant frequency of the circuit. So this will be called L1. To calculate the resonance frequency, we could use this formula. It's 1 over 2 pi square root LC. So for instance, let's say that the inductor has a value of 0.1 millihenries. And let's say that D1 varies between 20 picofarads and 460 picofarads based on the data that we had before. So with this information, what is the frequency range of this circuit? So let's plug in the information into the formula. Let's calculate the minimum frequency first. So we're going to have to use the highest capacitance to do that. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi square root. L is 0.1 millihenry, so that's 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And then C is 460 picofarads. Pico is 10 to the minus 12. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So if my math is correct, the minimum frequency is 742,063.7 hertz, which we can round that to 742 kilohertz. Now let's do the same thing to calculate the maximum frequency. So L is still the same, 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry's and then times this is going to be 20 times 10 to the minus 12 farads so I got 3,558,812.8 
So we could round that and say the maximum frequency is 3.56 megahertz. So the very kept diode is very useful for making high frequency voltage control oscillators or being used as tuned circuits because you could use a potential meter to adjust the capacitance of the diode, thus adjusting the resonant frequency of the circuit. So that's it for this video. For those of you who want more videos on electronics, feel free to check out my electronics playlist, or you can check out the links in the description section below. Thanks for watching.